Hey guys, Doug Childs here, Little Warriors and Wildman Time. Rich, how you doing, big dog? What's happening, Doug? Good to see you. Always happy to come on these mornings and, and talk to you about things that are going on in the world. So I'm pumped, man. I'm ready to do this thing. Got a glass of cold beer here. I think You know what? That's because it's 11.30 there. Here it's only 9.30, so I got a cup of <laughs> hot coffee. I, I hope this is beer. Uh, yeah, it looks it's, like beer. It smells like beer. Or applesauce, or... If it was warmer. Uh, good stuff. Hey, buddy, um, uh, midterms on us like stink on a monkey. We're about a month out, and um, uh, we got to talk to Christians about voting. I don't know, uh, I don't know how you were uh, discipled or you know, how your political views and concerns unfolded, but, um, man, I was around a bunch of uh, charismatic Christians that they used to say stuff like, voting so carnal, we're not a part of this realm. Our citizenship is in heaven, and uh, all we need to concern ourselves about is, you know, go into heaven where we can walk around in white penwas and play harps on clouds as we eat ice cream with Jesus. And I'm sitting there looking at, uh, you know, the crap that's <laughs> being unfurled upon the church and uh, American citizens and, and what occurs here in the U.S. extrapolates throughout the world. And uh, I think I remember reading once in Proverbs that a nation is blessed when it has righteous leadership and mm -hmm. uh, it's cursed. It's under a negative sanction if it has crappy, godless leadership. So I got to tell you, man, uh, you know, my discipleship blues entailed uh, <laughs> apathy and cynicism towards the political process. However, our Christian founders, they thought it was muy importante, so importante that they told uh, their snaggletooth King George to go blank himself, and they started this grand experiment in self-governance. Uh, did you experience the same thing? Or do you still experience the same kind of crap around Christians about voting being carnal, or they're just not concerned about it? They're more fascinated by Kim Kardashian's Instagram pics of her ever-growing butt, or that pizza that has cheese inside the crust. Well, I think the problem is that there's such a, great diversity in people's I don't care. And they have a whole bunch of reasons why they don't care. And uh, it's, it's interesting to me because you get the, it's spiritual, right? Like I'm, I'm spiritual and then this is not, you know what you said, this is my kingdoms in heaven. This is not my, you know, that, that gives up your responsibility. What that's doing is saying it's not my responsibility. It's not my problem. But those same people want to complain about the way that things are going in the world and in our country and different countries, not just America, but people want to complain, but they don't do what they can do. My problem is you're complaining about stuff because you can't make a difference, but you won't do the small things that together make a difference. And so they throw off their responsibility. I find that that's not just with politics, with everything. Let me, let me tell you this. When I was growing up, Doug, um, I tell people I didn't go to church. We had a Bible in our house. I got yelled at for setting something on top of it one time because it's obviously a holy book and nobody's allowed to touch it. And nobody in my house ever did. And so that Bible sat there on that thing, you know, like some magic thing, keep away vampires. Apparently it worked. We never got attacked by vampires. So I don't know, maybe it works for that, you know. But here's the deal. No, I wasn't raised going to church. Didn't go to church for weddings. Didn't go to church for funerals. Did not go to church. Um, was not against church. I believed that I was a Christian because culturally I wasn't a Satanist. Also, I never heard talk of Republicans and Democrats when I was growing up until in my early 20s, my grandparents made it known, I guess maybe they'd been saying it, but I had never heard it, that they were Democrats and they were lifelong Democrats. They would always be Democrats and the, the Republicans are for the rich white people. And my, my family was poor white people. So apparently that makes you Democrat, I don't know. So they would talk about that. I didn't really care. I didn't pay attention, Doug. I, it didn't matter to me. So I started working, uh, testing weapons for the military and started forming my my worldview about what I thought about things. And like I said, I wasn't raised, you gotta think like this, you gotta think like that. It was like, whatever, right? I had Republicans and Democrats in our house, didn't even know. I didn't get involved in any of that. And then when I sat down at the table and started listening to these people talk, I was like, oh no, I'm, I'm with those guys. I, I'm not with you. So nobody indoctrinated me. I realized, wait, my beliefs of what I think about work what I think about government, what I think about freedom of religion, freedom of speech, the right to own guns. I was like, I believe in this, and this is the party that believes in that. So that's how I came about that. 
So it didn't, it, you know, it wasn't until, and then when I became a Christian, I realized it was my Christian responsibility. Nobody taught me that in church, but I realized it's my responsibility to participate. You can't complain if you don't vote. You know, um, you know, the Christians who think that, and I tell you, man, there's this huge pastor, or this pastor who had a huge church, rather, down in, <laughs> Not a huge pastor. Yeah. There are some huge pastors. Yeah, this, this guy's more of a tinker pot. Uh, had a big church down in South Florida. I'll never forget, uh, Rich, when, uh, when Obama was running against McCain. He's, yeah. He's doing this, uh, this selfie video. He's driving in his convertible down in South Florida. He's not even in the ministry anymore. Uh, uh, that's a whole other podcast. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, he's like, you know what? He goes, God's not a Republican and God's not a Democrat. And it really doesn't matter who we vote for because our citizenship, just like you said, is in heaven. And, you know, these earthly things are all but a vapor and they're going to pass away. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, and I'm pulling, you know, the, the hair out of the back of my head. It's like, hey, numbnuts, why don't you tell that shit to the Coptic Christians that are being slaughtered because of uh, yep. bad government that's over them? Why don't you tell that to uh, the Christians in Nicaragua that are getting steamrolled uh, <laughs> right now? Uh, or Liberia. Yeah. Or Nigeria. Tell those Christians that it doesn't really matter who's in power. It doesn't really matter who's our leader. Why don't you, uh, why don't you also, um, if you make it to heaven, uh, talk to the departed souls under Adolf Hitler's Third Reich and uh, all the Jews and the Catholics and all the other uh, good, honest citizens from Deutschland, uh, what it means to have righteous leadership versus unrighteous. Yep. Same thing with Stalin. Same, same thing with the purge, uh, the Khmer Rouge with uh, Pol Pot. Millions of people liquidated based Educated upon people. Bad, the best people. bad leadership. Yep, that's right. And that's the problem is that we have a chance in this country to make a difference. I'm reading this statistic right here, and it says, uh, in the USA in recent elections, about two of every five, two out of every five, of self-professed Christians took the right for granted and did not vote. About one in five self-professed eligible Christians are not even registered to vote. So right off the bat, 20% of, of eligible Christians are not even registered to vote. Yeah. Can you believe that? And yeah. two out of five, Doug. Well, the, the upshot of, and, and uh, I don't know how that, uh, those stats are, the upshot is when uh, Trump was elected in 2016, unlike um, you know, when, when Romney ran against uh, Obama or McCain ran against Obama in 08, uh, the evangelicals, you know, they're saying, I'm sitting this one out. You know, I'm not going to vote for Uncle Fester. And uh, you know, Tiger Woods, he really looks cute. You know, and then when Romney comes, he's he's a Mormon and the evangelicals, man, they wear weird special underwear and they have multiple wives and they checked out by the millions, man. But when the when when Trump came to bat, uh, <laughs> much to the chagrin of the evangelical never Trumpers, evangelicals turned out mass, man. And you know what? They were right because he's done more for Christianity and protect our religious liberties than hey. the frickin uh, George W. Bush, Jim Acotta who confessed to be born again, first president ever, I believe, and uh, definitely more than Barack Obama. And that's uh, evil, wicked, comb over number 45. I'm talking about El Presidente. Hey, Donald Trump is Trump. the most anti-abortion pro-life president in the history of America. First thing There's he nobody. did, man, cut off the Mexican Accord with uh, the slaughter of babies, pouring millions of dollars to do that internationally. It was the first thing that Obama enacted. Well, Christians are concerned about the life of the unborn. Then why the hell did you stay out of the election in 2008 and 2012 and in 2016? Because, you know, if you're, again, you know, Rich, if you're really concerned, you can do, you can do more than do hashtags and, and cry emojis well, when you're talking about abortion. I have a question for you. I got Pringled enlarged ass and go vote during the midterms. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you, you sparked a thought in my mind. I'm a sparker. That's, that's, that's what, what you do. do. They call me sparker. You're a, you're a, you're a provoker. So mm. what would you say to the Christians? One group of Christians will say, we need to cast our vote for the best choice. And other people say, I, based on my convictions, won't vote because I won't vote for an ungodly man. Yeah. I, I, what would I you think, say to that? 
I think that's uh, pious uh, naivete, Rich. I think it's uh, um, I think it's spiritual sounding. Well, Trump har- grabbed a woman by the man. Privates. You know, even, even so, how can I cast my vote for a man that they have a recording that he grabbed a woman by her privates? Yeah, it goes back to what we've talked about. You know, ad nauseum, ad infinitum, and I don't mind being redundant at all when it comes to this point. If you apply that standard of measure uh, to to any person, any politician, any pastor, any leader, your boss, uh, who you're going to marry or whomever, uh, you're going to find deep San Andreas faults and foibles with anybody who is sucking air and who's currently a living human being. You got uh, you got David committed adultery and murder. Moses committed murder and ran from the <laughs> ran from Tommy Lee Jones. Samson was running with hookers and Samson killing people. Dating prostitutes and uh, uh, you've got uh, what else? Um, oh yeah, Abraham uh, committed adultery, lied about being married. Well, I would never, Rich. I would never, never. I said never. Oh no, Beauregard. I would never vote for somebody who has those kind of faults in his past. Then. Th- <laughs> <laughs> then then you can't screwed, vote for anyone. Man. You are- so, so you have a guy who is in office who I believe is the, is the most pro-life, pro-freedom of religion, pro-Second Amendment president that I've ever seen, that I can ever remember. But it's not worth casting a vote because he doesn't go to my church. You know, my thing, even Romney. Now, check it out. Romney's a Mormon. Mormonism is a cult. Boom. That's, you can not cult sociology but a sect and yeah, definitely the, a cult, theologically to Christian defined, theologic. Yeah, we're but not, you know what? They, they don't make bad neighbors. They don't make bad people to go and buy stuff from their store. And they don't make bad presidents. I, do I want him to be a Christian? Well, of course I would want him to be a Christian because I care for his soul. But does that make him not qualified to be a president? Not in my book. Yeah, it doesn't. I agree. You know? I, so, I voted, I voted so, for Romney. I thought Romney against uh, Obama was the difference day. between chalk and cheese, man. Well, here's the problem, Doug, is that the devil is united. The kingdom of darkness is united. They are united on the destruction of freedom of speech and the freedom of religion yep. in America because we're the greatest export of Christianity, exporter of Christianity in the history of the world. The devil is united in its cause against us to stop us. But the Christians, Doug, the Christians are over there going, well, no, because that one speaks in tongues. That one doesn't speak in tongues. And that one believes in healing. And that one doesn't believe in healing. And that one, you know, this. And it's like, that's the stupidest it's like we're under attack, you stupid idiots. Your, your lifestyle, your freedom of religion is under attack. As a Christian, you need to vote. Oh, and, and for the record, let me throw this out there. It's not going to matter in the end anyway. In the end, all this stuff's going to go down. But you know what? We have a responsibility to hold it off until that time anyway. It doesn't mean we roll over and give into darkness. Yeah, here's what I, here's what I, um, and again, you know, a lot of Christians uh, take that kind of passive uh, stance when it comes to politics and, and being part of the, the national conversation and who gets to establish policy for us and abroad. And they're like, eh, it just doesn't really matter. That's the same kind of garbage uh, the German church thought when, yep. when Hitler <laughs> is, is rising to the top of the toilet. And uh, the German church, they got into uh, uh, private little Bible studies on the sidelines of life. Uh, they yep. became salvation egoists. You know, it's just, Lord, bless me. Uh, do something for me. And in, in the meantime, freaking crazy ass Hitler's like, yeah. And everybody's like, uh, we shouldn't let this guy run the tilt a whirl at the carnival much less our nation. But because you're on the sidelines of life in some little Christian ghetto, you know, numb nuts just rose to the top of the planet and he's, he's, he's murdering people because yep. you, again, were, uh, uh, you know, fascinated with your own salvation and sanctification. And, uh, you know, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, which we talked about uh, quite often, yep. he's like, hey, man, this guy is nuttier than a squirrel turd. I'm going to try to derail him. And a Lutheran pastor came up with an assassination plot to, uh, to take out Adolf Hitler.
No, it was it was clear that uh, Hitler was a threat, and Bonhoeffer wasn't going to be, you know, just a a bystander. And um, yep. I mean, there's there's injunctions in Deuteronomy and Exodus, Rich, and uh, you know this, but the uninitiated on Warriors and Wild Men not may not basically says that if 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 you see a country uh, going down the crapper and you don't say or do anything in your wee little power, we always think like, what does it matter to you know? What can I do? Uh, what can I get for God, it? God doesn't, God doesn't uh, you know, look. And again, he empowers weak people to do some amazing things and turning countries and nations around. And uh, he's like, I just want somebody to stand in the gap and try to stop this insanity. And he says, if you don't, if you see it and you don't say something or do anything about it, yeah. uh, the least of this stuff is vote. Then God says, you got blood on your hands. I'm going to hold you accountable. That's so the right. so the passive so the pass, passive aspect of uh, not being involved in the political process and listen warriors and wildmen you make sure everybody who's eighteen and over who can vote they are registered to vote they show up the midterms they look at the issues uh, through the the lens of the scripture and common sense and reason and economic and national security and then you vote for whomever. Uh, lines up the best uh, with the biblical worldview. The, the second thing that I that drives me nuts, Rich, is all the hipster socialist Christians who think Jesus was this bearded hippie uh, that was pro big government. You can't find anybody more anti big government, anti. Uh, uh, he rebuked anybody that relied on the power of the state. If he was to give anything to anyone at any time, it was always because of the personal benevolence that flowed from their heart. Uh, to the weak and yep. suffering, and it had crap all to do with voting for some big bureaucratic governmental uh, bureaucracy to govern the masses. Christ was not down with that crap, but there's a yep. lot of Christians now, hook, line, and sinker, man, social justice warriors, uh, democratic socialists, and they think that uh, because Jesus was you know, kind to the poor as a person, and he advocated it for his followers, that means that the government's supposed to take all of our money and yeah. distribute it according to whom they see fit. Well, check this out. Um, the Democrats are pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing for people to vote. Well, just this week, the Republicans started really pushing and saying, hey, we need to get out there and vote. And the Democrats called them on it and said, what are you guys doing? It's like, wait a minute, you guys have been traveling around on buses, giving people free stuff and transporting them to go vote for things they don't know anything about, like literally registering homeless people and then taking them to vote. And they have no idea what they're voting about. And then the Republicans are saying, hey, you need to make sure that you get out there in the midterms. It's important. That's fashion. And they say, oh, well, what are you doing? What are you, what are you trying to do? You trying to get people to do something? Yeah. And the Kavanaugh thing's blowing up in their face because, uh, you know, it's showing that people are not buying it. They're, they're just not down with it. And well, another like thing, second thing is this, Doug, is that um, too many people are voting according to their culture instead of their conscience and scripture. Right. It's like, you know, if you're Hispanic, you're like, no, we can't, we can't vote for Trump. He wants to build a wall. Well, you know what? Please read something. You know, if you're if you're if you're black and you want to try to say something and try to support Trump, they will shame Kanye West. Are you kidding me? Like if they'll do that to him, imagine what it would be like, Doug, being a black man that wants to vote for Trump. You would never mention that on Facebook because you would be destroyed if they'll do that to Kanye. What would they do to just the average guy? Yeah, I got a they'll buddy go right after him. I've got a buddy who's uh, a pretty outspoken uh pro-American, been in the military, uh, Mexican, and um, he's totally pro-building the wall, and you won't believe, well, you, you would, just the cavalcade yep. of garbage that gets thrown on him as he's, you know, abandoning his culture, he's abandoning his people, uh, yada, yada, blah, blah, and he goes, listen, I, when I came over here, I was tired of my nation. It was nothing but, <laughs> it was nothing but an abysmal economy, with uh, no visible means of support, no future. He said the future lay across that river called the Rio Grande. And when I, when I came over, I put my Mexican flag down and fought and embraced the American flag. And I want people, he said, look, I came over here illegally. 
But this this is chaos now. It's nothing compared to what it used to be, you know, mm-hmm. as far as the flood of people coming over. And we were talking, and, and the people that came over, Rich, uh, like I used to have uh, a lot of uh, illegal aliens working for me and my landscaping company back in Texas uh, 30 years ago. They weren't carrying La Raza flags. They weren't saying death to America. They weren't demanding free shit. They came over here, worked their butts off in the summer, took all the money back in the winter, and rocked up every spring ready to work again. That kind yep. of vibe, that kind of uh, motif, that's gone. Now it's, it's uh, we want this, we demand that, and we want uh, America back because you stole it and they forgot. No, you sold it to us. We didn't steal anything. Yep. And, and you know what, Doug? We, here, let, me, let me clarify this point, too. We're not trying to make this a Christian nation through government. We believe in making the gospel available to everyone in the entire world. That's what we're commanded to do. We can't make them believe. We're not interested in making them believe. We don't care. They could do, Well, we care, but we're not making anybody. We're not trying to pass a law to make people Christian. What we are doing is we need to stand up and fight for our right to have the freedom to say whatever we want, which means we'll fight for your right to say whatever you want. We just don't want you to silence us. Yeah, we exactly. don't want you to throw us in prison. Doug, that stuff's coming. That stuff is coming. They're going to throw us in prison, Doug. They're going to throw us in prison. I'm telling you, it's going to happen for being Christian, for preaching the word. It's going to, the Bible is going to become a hate crime. Pastors are going to be thrown in prison, except for these, these wimps that refuse to preach the word because they're coddling this horrible culture. And and I'm telling you, Doug, they're going to throw people in prison. Well, it's already, uh, uh, you know, certain chunks of the Bible and Leviticus and uh, Romans chapter one, it's already deemed uh, illegal and hate speech and certain uh, Western Europe countries, Canada too. You can't say that. You can't go there. Houston, uh, I think it was three or four years ago, the, the mayor uh, actually had the ovaries to tell the pastors, uh, before you go oh, yeah. anywhere near Romans chapter one, we have to approve of your notes. That's what and, I'm freaking yeah. talking about. Yeah. Duh, so, check this but out. Again, but nope. again, Christians, nope. they're like, well, you know, it doesn't nope. matter. That well, and they're in denial that that stuff is happening. They're, yeah. You know what? They act like they don't watch news, but, man. They don't freaking hey, watch here's anything. Here's the problem. I don't want to get engaged. I'm too spiritual. But if they're so spiritual, why can't they see the spiritual reality behind the politics of what's happening? They're trying to shut up our mouths. They're trying to stop us from preaching the gospel. It, it's an absolute fact. They want to control us. Now, the, each individual person that the devil is using like an idiotic pawn may not have that as their primary goal, but the devil will give them whatever they want yeah. to get what he wants. And he wants to shut us up. Yeah. And that, Doug, that's a fact. I told you, I got a letter from the ACLU from a guy who was a, a, a bishop in, the, in, in representing the ACLU, told me that I was preaching this and that, and I couldn't do that anymore. Doug, I grabbed that letter and took a pen and I carved my answer into their letter i didn't write a new letter i wrote my letter with a pen on top of their letter and i said i have lawyers to bring it on and i mailed it back doug not kidding they have never sent me one thing since that day because you know what if you're a freaking coward they will they will steamroll you but we need to get some pastors get some balls and some anointing back in the pulpit and we need men to be men i'm sick of this stuff doug i'm tired of it everybody wants everybody to be some passive wimpy christian while the devil steamrolls everyone and i'm done with that garbage well as far as i'm concerned pastors uh priests uh youth group leaders, whatever you want to call them, if they don't inform and exhort uh, their charges, people who are under their uh, discipleship, whatever the hell you want to call it, their leadership, as far as I'm concerned, they have aided and abetted evil, and uh, they can't complain when the, when the nation goes down the toilet. Uh, when they see their, their cherished liberties evaporate like a pack of smokes, well, it was, it was your fault. Again, just like the church in uh, Germany. You're a salvation egoist. You're concerned about little private Bible studies, you know, to take you to well, heaven. Doug, Sit on it's clouds. It's exactly like that same story hard. that we've heard so many times in church, you know, the guy in the flood and somebody paddles up in a boat. Hey, right. I'm here to rescue you. No, I'm waiting for God. Well, God and they man. leave in the second boat, third boat. And the guy dies and goes to heaven and he says, God, where were you? He said, who do you think sent those three boats? That's how Christians are acting right now. They're like, I'm not going to get involved with the thing that I can do right here because I'm waiting for God to appear in the heavens. It's the dumbest garbage I've ever heard in my life. 
Yeah, um, and if people think that we're full of crap, um, my company, uh, ClashDaily.com, uh, was one of the top publishers in the United States. Now, granted, uh, we, don't, <laughs> we, we don't preach Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John a bunch. Most of our Christian, or most of our writers are Christian. Most of them are conservative. We have non-Christian writers. We have libertarians in there, and uh, you know, we just we just welcome the amalgamation of different worldviews and opinion. But we slant to the right. Uh, when Trump was elected, they took our reach on Facebook, which was twenty to sixty million people a week, and uh, we're down to. I checked uh, right before we came on. We're down to like half a million a week now. Now, granted. That's still a, a chunk of people. But yeah, take, but what but, a cut. Yeah, but, but take, take this, Rich. Um, <clears throat> now, I get people not liking me. <laughs> uh, my Catholic brothers uh, think that I have the soul of a heretic. My evangelical buddies think that I have the mouth of a stevedore. I get it. But look what they did to Franklin Graham, the Billy Graham Foundation. They ratcheted down his reach. Now, now Franklin and Billy, nothing like me. Come on, they're I'm gold, a, man. I, they're gold. No, I know, but I mean, they're not mouthy, cigar-smoking, could drop a blue word every now and then uh, type of guy. I get not liking me, but Billy frickin' Graham and Franklin Graham, are you kidding me? And Facebook just said, you're not going to reach anybody else. 99% of their reach just gone. Poof! And uh, I sent you a text right before we queued up for the podcast. Um, And I won't mention the name, but uh, a big fortune company of conservative publishers, they got their Twitter account suspended, just boom, gone, no explanation. Multiple different properties, multiple publishing platforms, Rich. Uh, Just immediately, again, no word of warning. They just said, adios, muchachos. You're gone. No explanation, gone. Now, Christian, that are listening to the Warriors and Wild Men podcast, yeah, it's not happening to you immediately, but uh, just like my it's old coming. buddy, my old buddy, my old pal Rich said, it's coming, and it's <laughs> it's it's not coming. It is here, and uh, and yeah. I'm not a doom and glimmer man, but um, the enemy's doing enemy shit, and uh, I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. So yeah, we need to you get out can, there. You can, and here's here's something that Trump said last night, man, uh, at his rally in Mississippi. He said the only reason. Are you listening, warrior and wild men? The only reason to vote Democrat is you're tired of winning. That's the only reason to vote Democrat. Well, listen to this, Doug. Ten things that Democrats will take away from America if they win the House and the Senate. Your money. They've already said they're going to get rid of the tax cuts. Economic growth. um, Because... Trump got rid of all the regulate a lot of the regulations that is allowed that, us. Is that Charlie Kirk's piece? This is from uh, Fox. It is. Yeah, Charlie Kirk. Charlie Kirk. Yeah. Hey, and listen. Then he said, but Rich, he before said, we go you, on, go ahead. Warriors and wild men, go to foxnews.com. We're going to put a version of it on clashdaily.com, uh, and you got to read Charlie Kirk's whole thing. Rich, go ahead and roll yep. through those things, man. Um, new jobs. Um, one thing the Democrats are good at is killing American jobs. Obama sent. Half a million jobs overseas. Trump's bringing them back. You can forget that. It's gone. Quality health care. They're going to keep ramming Obamacare down our throat. It's the only okay, thing me, that they can do. Let me pause you right there. Uh, so you went through four, right? Go mm-hmm. read the headers on the four uh, real quick again, please. Okay. Your money because of tax cut. Now, let me ask, the, Christ, let me ask the little Christian out there. You care about your money? Oh, money doesn't mean <laughs> anything, man. Money's evil. No, the love of money is the root of all evil. Uh, you're, you've got more money in your pocket. 90% of Americans have more money yep. in their pocket thanks to who? Donald Trump. And, uh, and the people, the Republicans that are going to support him in the House and the Senate, if they get reelected, that cash is going to keep gone. on cranking. If yep. they and that don't, goes with the economic growth, growth if, also. So you don't, like, you don't like a strong bolstering... Uh, kick-ass economy, Christian? You want us to How about suffer? jobs? You want us to be in debt? New wow. jobs. Oh, jobs doesn't matter because we're going to heaven. See, this is the, the point that Rich is making from Charlie's article. Uh, to those who are passive and naive and cynical, this is real-life crap. Real life. People, real stuff. You pray for daily bread, God puts a righteous leader in there, albeit not a perfect one. And guess what? 
Daily Bread starts coming to you. Go ahead, bro. And then health insurance. Oh, they'll, they'll try to bring Obamacare back. Yeah, disastrous. Hold on, I'm looking you, up uh, Arizona. Go ahead. Arizona saw, what, 116% uh, increase in no, their health care No, 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 no. I think it's more than that. I was looking that yeah. up right now. Doug, I'm serious. I think it was 174 or 107. It's, okay, let's, it's let's an go ungodly let's go, amount. Let's go conservative, 100% increase. Yeah. yeah. You want that again? Because politics doesn't matter, and you're too lazy. You're too much of a toad and a slug to get off your ass and vote during the midterms, and, and you're going to take that kind of financial hit? And it's going to strain your relationship with your wife and your kids. And you were correct, 116 percent. Yeah, no, I mean 116. So you're too you're too spiritual to do anything about it. You're a moron. You're a disgrace to Christianity. You're a disgrace well, pop- to this nation and and its founders and everything that they stood for. Your passivity is pure evil, as far as I'm concerned. Yep. So um, and then, how about the funds to defend America? Trump has pumped money into the military, yeah. national defense. Hey, you don't hear take that bro, away. You don't, even, you don't even hear squat about ISIS or, <laughs> I mean, nope. and during hey, Obama's is is is, is yeah. was was now. <laughs> yeah, during Obama's reign of terror, we were hearing and seeing attacks, atrocious attacks, uh, not just over in the Middle East and Sukkistan and stuff, but also in uh, in Paris and San Bernardino and Pulse nightclub in Orlando, all through yep. the United States. That crap was going down. Guess what? I haven't heard any. I hadn't heard. I mean, nothing compared about that. Compared to 2015 and 2014, you got to be kidding me. They're yep. murdering cartoonists. You don't hear anything about it now. Progress on peace, North Korea, that stuff, that's going away. Yeah. That's because of Trump, personally. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. And he was going to put us into apocalypse, toss us into, uh, yeah. you know, the book of Revelation. But instead, his uh, Wait, stable the genius. Democrats lied? Yeah. They lied Stable that. genius uh, un, undid uh, what Obama threatened was going to occur if he went hard with little Kim. Go ahead, bro. Secure borders. You know that Trump wants to build the wall, but he's at least tightening up the borders. And you know the liberals want, they literally want open borders. Hey, make any sense. And listen, uh, fair Christian, if you're like, well, you know, having a, having a big old wall on the borders... It, you know, it's just, it's just not like Jesus. Listen, um, uh, opioids cross that border. Uh, little girls that are post-pubescent or, or younger cross that border into sex trafficking and slave rings. Yep. And uh, yeah, a border kind of stymies that flow. Do you as yeah. a Christian care about that? Huh? Well, there's another thing. You, you think that a wall's not very Christian-like? Maybe you haven't heard of heaven. It's a walled city, buddy. It's a walled city, baby, and there's only one way in. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, and St. Peter's um, running the velvet rope. Well, this one right here is going to get me fired up, but gun rights. Doesn't matter. Jesus will protect us. Doug, I've had my guns taken away twice. Yeah. Not only have I never been convicted of a crime, I was never, well, relating to the gun rights, full disclosure, and I'm talking 27 years ago, but... Not only was I never convicted of a crime, Doug, I wasn't even accused of a crime. Had my guns taken away twice. That's America right now, man. Yeah. Um, voices on social media, you're always already talking about that. They don't care. And then stable government, because these people are out of freaking control, Doug. Yeah, and Paul's injunction to the, to the uh, Christians in his epistles uh, to Timothy was, we pray for our leaders so that we can live in peace. Now you get you get the unrighteous ruling, uh, you get you, uh, the things that are uh, demarked in the Bill of Rights. They start vanishing away. There's no peace, man. You can't say nope. what you want. You can't live how you want. You can't protect yourself or your family uh, or innocent people. Uh, you see you see an influx of uh, folks that don't give a liberty gibbet about our Constitution uh, yep. crossing over in the southern border. And in the in the thing that uh, God, I believe, in His sovereignty, uh, via our founding documents and our founding fathers, brought forth on this terra firma on this side of the planet, has indeed been a blessing to all people, tribes, nations, and yep. tongues, not just us. You'll see that stuff just dwindle away, as it did under Barack Obama 
in eight years. Trump's brought it back in two. And when I'm sitting there listening to the Democrats and all their scare tactics and all their Russia and Kavanaugh and Stormy Daniels and all this other crap, I'm trying to I'm trying to deduce down, uh, Rich, what is their message for the midterms? And here's what I've got. Um, the Democrats, uh, they show themselves to be concerned about the separations of families in 2018, but they weren't in 2014 when Obama's administration was doing it. Hmm. Uh, here's another point. Uh, Democrats call conservatives and Christians uh, deplorable, racist, sexist, and every other pejorative term uh, that they can think of, including implying that Kavanaugh, a sitting D.C. District Court judge, is a super secret serial rapist. That's who you're voting for if you vote for Democrats in the midterms. Also, they jumped on the Me Too uh, bandwagon and ditched the Fifth Amendment right of due process for both accuser and the accused. They've showboated, grandstand, fear-mongered, and outright lied about uh, sitting politicians and the president. They've irresponsibly ginned up harassment of Republicans in public spaces, which, by the way, the restaurant, Fiola, in uh, D.C., that allowed uh, those anti kavanaugh uh, mooks to harass Cruz and, and, his, uh, that was crazy. and his hot lady. Guess what? Their business is tanking. They're begging Good. customers to come back. They're like, we didn't I hope know. They, I hope they go we under. We didn't know. Bro, if, you were, if it was uh, Rich's restaurant, you know, I don't know, what kind of food would you serve? Comfort food. Mexican you got food. Come on, Mexican somebody. food. All right. So you got Rich's Mexican restaurant. And uh, say Rica- all of a sudden. Ricardo's. Ricardo's. <laughs> Ricardo's. <laughs> Ricardo's uh, Tortilla Shack. And you've got, yeah. you got, you got Ted Cruz, which is funny because they're like, you know, we're against this white. Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz is... Ted uh, Cruz. Yeah. C-R-U-Z, Cruz. you moron. He's and what color were the people yelling at him? Yeah, white. But Pretty anyway, sure they were Rich, white. Anyway. So, so you got Ricardo's. You got, you got Zeke. He's slinging hash and refrieds back in the kitchen. You got Luke. He's, uh, he's the maitre d'. You got a couple of... Uh, you got Matt Diaz. You got some other... The, the brothers around, and uh, you know they're, they're doing the waiting, doing a little bartending, shaking up some Mexican margaritas or martinis, whatever you call it. And um, all of a sudden, these anti-Kavanaugh people surround Ted Cruz at a table. What does Rich do? <laughs> Doug, how about some people come in my restaurant and surround anybody? Yeah. I don't care who it is. Right. You're not here to eat. Sit down yeah. and eat. But not only that, if you're here to eat and you're causing problems with other people, you're gone. That's just common sense. That's business. It's also just common respect for decent human beings. I would never allow anybody. Look, if Obama right. was in there, Doug, I would not let people come in there and protest Obama yeah, or bother him. Not. Ever. Not you once. Got a, if you got a, a lesbian couple, you get a bunch of uh, freaking They're crazy, not coming in my restaurant to bug moves. those people. Yeah, you're not going to. They're here to eat and you need to shut let the front eat. door. And uh, you guys can uh, take it out on the street. But uh, if you watch that video, nobody in the they restaurant. They let them in, Doug. They let huh? them in. They let them in. Oh, and they, they tipped them off. One thing. The it guy's like, oh, we didn't do anything about it. It's like, how did you know Ted Cruz is in the, in the restaurant? Somebody on your staff tipped these nutbags off that he's there. They were, well, here's, before he even got there, when he made the reservation, there were six of them seated at the bar waiting for him. Then they sat him down to his uh, table in a VIP area, oh, and then okay. and then once uh, Ted and uh, his wife came in there, then they alerted six other, uh, and so you got their whole posse of twelve in there, uh, just getting up in Cruz's face, man. And I'm, brother, I I think it's hilarious that you know here whoever in the restaurant thought that this was going to be a good idea, and America said in the D.C. area in particular, it's like you know what, uh, blank your restaurant. We're not eating yep. there anymore. It's not let's just like you said. It's not even secure, and we nope. wouldn't allow that happen to Obama. Listen, I'm no Nobody. fan of George Soros, but you're not going to do it in my establishment. You know that's right. Okay. You do it wherever, but not here. And, Come on, uh, Christian. Something's at stake. Rise up and vote. Go and vote. Get out there and vote. Do it. You got to vote. It's your, it's your responsibility. It's not just a responsibility as Americans. It's your responsibility as a Christian. Amen. What do we do, Rich? Where do they go? go Warriors and Wild Men. Go to our website. Sign up for our podcast. Love us. Leave us a comment. Rate us. Review us. Like us on Facebook. Join the Warriors and Wild Men uh, closed group where we talk about stuff that we can't talk about everywhere else. 
where you can get it real, live and raw. And it's pretty raw regularly, but this is extra raw if you want to get the real deal. Warriors and Wildmen. And don't forget to get the man card because, uh, you know, we need these in America today. Steel, baby. You got to have steel. Warriors and Wildmen. Doug? Stay rowdy. <laughs>